One of the core things that you want to know about an MVVM framework is how to pass data back and forth. And that's exactly what we're going to see with fresh MVVM and Xamarin forms. But before I go into any of the technical details, I have one person to thank for joining this channel as a member, Antonio Mario Thurler Jr. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Thank you so much for, I saw you rejoin the channel, but you're now a senior developer. So thank you so, so much for supporting me on this channel um, and everything I do. If you're watching this and think, hey, what is this membership that you're talking about? Go click that join button and see what it's all about. And maybe you will consider joining this channel as a member and supporting me a little bit as well. Thank you so much. Let's first see our end result right here. So um, if you've watched the navigation sample for Fresh MVVM, the video on that as well, um, then you'll probably um, recognize this. So here we have the go to page and go to page model. So let's just see. And here we have this little thing down here, which says my name and a little checkbox, which is if you're subscribed or not, which of course you should be. Um, and this data comes from like the main page right here. Um, but we can also do this from the page model where we also pass in this data. And if I then uncheck this and close the data, you will see that this data is passed back to the main page model. Um, and it will pop up with this little alert and says subscribe false, which is of course not great. So let's go quickly back and let's set it to true. And you can see that it's true. So how all of this works, how we are passing around this data from view model to view to model, that's exactly what we're going to see in this video. All right, all right. So here we are in Visual Studio for Mac 2019. On the left, you can see the um, page in XAML and on the right is running on my iOS simulator. Now you can see already here at the top, this title says fresh MVVM navigation sample, which is another video of mine. It should pop up on your screen right now, or you can find it down in the video description below um, because I'm using this as kind of like the baseline to um, start this example from. So if you haven't watched that yet, I would highly recommend you watching that first or, you know, if you already know about how to navigate in fresh MVVM, then um, I guess you're all good. So let's just go ahead. Um, but you know, it's not about that piece of the code. Um, so watch that video first. And here I'm going to show you how to pass data between these page models because fresh MVVM allows you to navigate between view models. Um, so view model to view model, it doesn't need to know about the view, it will figure that out automatically. Um, but here we will see how to pass data between these view models. So whenever you go to a new view model, you can pass in some data. And whenever you leave the view model, you can pass some data back as well. So let's go check out how to do that. Um, here, I already have two buttons, go to page and go to page modal. So go to page kind of pushes a page onto the navigation stack. And you can um, go here with this little um, back button um, or this close page, but this is actually the one for like the modal stack. Uh, we will see about that in a little bit. So you can just go back with this one. Um, or we can do the same thing with like the modal thing where it pops up from the bottom. Um, and you really have to press this close page button for it to to go back. But first, let's update this title fresh MVVM. Um, what should I call it pass data sample? I guess that as good as any, you can see with uh, XAML hot reload, it will update automatically on my iOS simulator. This will also work for uh, the Android simulator, Android emulator, I should say, and you know, on a physical device, and also, of course, on Visual Studio for Windows. Okay, so let's see what we're about to do here. So I have this main page, and let's go over to my solution. Um, so I have these two pages, main page and first page, that's the page that we're navigating to. Um, and I have these page models, main page model and first page model, because Fresh MVVM will figure out which page model or um, page will will um, are, are linked together by the convention of the name. Um, now here you will notice that I'm saying page and page model. You can also use view and view model if that suits you better. I like the page and page model um, terms for some reason. Um, but you know you can do view and view model just as well. So if we go to the main page model now first. Um, so let's introduce a little small. Um, I'm just gonna put it in here, a little extra class that we can use just to show you that it also works with like complex objects. So let's make it public class, I don't know, YouTuber, uh, maybe something like that. And then we're going to give that a little property, public string author, um, get set. It's not going to be too impressive and maybe public bool 
um, subscribed. So that's, that seems appropriate, right? Subscribed, get set. Um, so now we have a YouTuber class and let's see how we can transport that um, into our new page. So in my uh, main page model, I'm going to just say var um, YouTuber is new YouTuber. There we go. And I'm going to initialize that with author. Uh, who should I pick? Who should I pick? Maybe just, just, you know, a little YouTuber I know. Um, and subscribed, subscribed is false. Uh, maybe, maybe we should see if we could change that. Subscribed false. Uh, so we have this little YouTuber and now this go to page command, this is the command that will push, like this is the first button right here. So this is for our first um, page right here. And what we can say, if we look at this push page model, if we look at the overloads we have here, um, then we have this animate is true. That's kind of the, the uh, default option. Uh, but we also have this object data and then you can set it as modal and animate. But the object data is kind of the interesting one. So what we can do now is we can put in here our YouTuber and that will push down the YouTuber into this page model, into this first page model. And then we can use it from there, which is the really cool thing that I'm about to show you. So if we now move over to our first page model, um, here we go. And then in this class, we can um, override. So this has a method override um, in it. So here we have the init method and we also have the reverse in it. We will see that in a little bit, but let's focus on this init method first. And we can override this one because we're inheriting here from the fresh base base model. That is because that's why we need to inherit from this class so that, um, you know, fresh MVVM knows that we have this init method that we can call to push down data in here. Um, so here it will call the base init, which doesn't do anything. If you inspect the code for the fresh base page model, nothing happens there. So we can get rid of this one or you can keep it in there if that's what you like. Um, and we can get here our var YouTuber is um, init data because it's, you know, it's a generic object because you never know what you're going to push down here. Um, so maybe, you know, if you want to make your overload of the fresh base page model, you can make it um, type safe. You can make it um, your type uh, else. You will have to cast it here yourself. So let's make this as YouTuber. And now our YouTuber um, has this data. Actually, what we're uh, let's let's take this to the next step. Let's use a little data binding in here as well. Um, so let's make another property here. Property um, YouTuber YouTuber um, get set. There we go. So I'm just adding a new property to this first page model. If you don't know about data binding or anything is confusing here, I totally get that. Um, I have some videos on data binding already. So the um, playlist should pop up on your screen right now or is down in the video description below. Um, if you still have questions after watching those, please let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can answer that or maybe make a little video to make things clear. Uh, so I'm going to go a little bit fast on this one, assuming that you have a little bit of knowledge about data data binding and that kind of stuff. Um, so we have this YouTuber here um, and let's then change this to YouTuber is in the data as YouTuber. There we go. Um, so that assigns it to this property right here. And what we can then do is go to our first page model. So let's go to our page. Uh, sorry, our first page, not our first page model. There we go. Um, and I'm just going to not worry about the design. So I'm going to add here a new label, uh, which has a text of binding. And then we can say YouTuber. So this is cool, right? We can go into that property. And then from that property, we can go into the properties of that object. Does that make sense? So we have the YouTuber and then we can go to the YouTuber dot author. We can just navigate in here and the data binding will pick that up. So we have this one and let's also add a little checkbox is checked and let's make that binding again. We can just go into the YouTuber here because you know, the, the view the page and the page model will have that binding context wired up automatically because fresh MVVM does that. Um, and we can say subscribed and it will pick that up as well. There we go. Little checkbox. If I save this, then we can probably see that already popping up. Here's our checkbox. See, but it doesn't do this yet because I also made changes in code. Um, so I think I got this already. So let me stop this and restart this real quickly. Um, so what we're going to see here now is in our main page, we have this um, button right here, go to page, which calls the go to page command. Then we go to our page model, which has the go to page command. This will push a page model, namely the first page model. And we push in here the YouTuber. So then we come to this first page model. 
and we land in this init method, it will see that we have this, this init data as YouTuber. We are going to assign this to the YouTuber um, property that we have here. And then in our first page, it's going to fill these properties in, in the label and the checkbox by data binding by just referring to that property. And the real cool thing is, is if you've worked with MVVM before, then you know you might need to call the I notify property change and that kind of stuff to make it all show up. That is all arranged for you in fresh MVVM. So I didn't do any of that stuff. So if I now go to page, you can see that boom, it pops up here, Gerald Slaus, um, and the little checkbox, which is not checked because it isn't subscribed yet. Sad face, um, but we're going to change that, right? So I can say boom, subscribed right here. Of course, this doesn't work. So actually click on that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. Um, so that is how we can push this data on like the, the 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 one end right so we can push data in like that but now let's say so let's make this example let's say that this is maybe an uh app that um has users and details of those users so you um push a user in some kind of list view and it will take you to the detail screen with all kinds of entries like the first name the last name um if the user account is enabled with a checkbox yes or no and if you make changes there you might want to update your list view right so whenever we go back we might want to push that little data that little object back to the previous page and we can do something with it there as well right so depending on your design your architecture that's something that you might want to do um, now the thing is if you want to do that it's not that um, hard to implement um, because let's have a look at our first page model um, so that is this page that you're looking at here. We have our YouTuber through the init method. And what we can do here, just like when we said push page model, we also have pop page model. And you can say I'm already saying here like the modal. So this is this little close button right here. Um, but what we can also, we also have an overload here that takes a object as well. So I mentioned this in a previous video. It's a little tricky because if you're only saying true here, uh, for the modal, then it's going to see that as the data here. So, you know, that can by, be a bit confusing why stuff doesn't work. So make sure that you put that modal in here. But if we're actually pushing back data, so we can just push back our, our YouTuber here, YouTuber, and it will push back that object um, to like the previous page that we're going to. So this is going to pop. So it knows where it comes from, right? It knows what the other page is under the navigation stack. So it knows where it's going to go to. Um, and I know it too, because it's this main page model. And here we can also override the other one that I just mentioned, which is the reverse in it kind of makes sense, right? That's the reverse of the init. Whenever something is popped, we're going to land here. So we're going to take this one again, this base call doesn't do anything. So we can just remove it just as well. Um, and let's just say we're going to just um, core methods, which is something built into fresh MVVM. Again, we get this for free by inheriting from the fresh base page model. Um, and we can say, where is it? Where is it? Display alert. Here we go. So uh, again, an alerting service is built into fresh MVVN. We can just show an alert box right here. And what I'm going to do, actually, let me get the return data first. So YouTuber is um, returned data as YouTuber. There we go. So we should have that as well. Um, and then here display alert is, um, well, let's just make it YouTuber dot author. And let's make the message um, subscribed. There we go. Little string interpolation should be going on here. And here I can say YouTuber dot subscribed. All right, this is a bit messed up here. Okay, for the close button. And there we go. So we have this core method right here display alert. Um, really good. So the thing that I now need to do this is like if we go back here. So this is the two commands. This is for the modal one. So this is this is our second button right here. And you can see right now I'm passing down null. Um, so what I want to do here is of course also pass down this YouTuber else it's not going to work. Um, so here we have that one. And I think I got it all wired up now. So let's stop and restart this again. Um, and while this is starting, let me tell you that this is not, it's not exclusive to using modals, but if you want to um, kind of give back another um, piece of object, another piece of data, you do have to use that pop page model. So if you're going to use this back button right here, that's not going to work. 
um, you really have to call this pop page model um, to, to get back that data because this is the only place where you're passing in that data, right? So um, you can definitely use it without modals, but you will have to have this close button or um, some other way. Um, now, also, this is kind of like where fresh MVVM kind of breaks the MVVM pattern because if you look closely here at the overrides, um, you also have the view is appearing and view is disappearing. So I guess whenever you wire up the back button, you could do so with the is appearing and the is disappearing. Um, but then an extra layer of complexity is that in Xamarin Forms, I think the uh, view is appearing and disappearing might be different between Android and iOS. Um, so that's probably not something that you want. So, you know, you just want to find some solution in your UI, maybe have a save button or something like that um, in your screen that will do the pop page model and give that data that back that way. Um, so that's just a little side note, but if we now do it through this modal page, um, then you can see my data is coming in here, Gerald Slush and the check button. And you can see if I do this, we're actually subscribed um, and I close the page and we can say, see that here is my name and subscribed is true. So it will also, which makes sense, right? It will also take back that data that you've changed, push that back because you know it's just a, a reference that you're passing into that um, object. So you will get all the changes back as well, um, which is really cool and now you can handle that data in kind of like your main page model. Again, this, this example, you know, is of course very much simplified, but if you have some kind of data entry application where you want to pass back and forth this data, this is how you do it. I now recorded a couple of videos on fresh MVVM, kind of like the basics, how the navigation works, um, and now this passing data around. So I think you should have all the basics to get started with fresh MVVM and this MVVM framework. Now, there is more frameworks out there. So if there's something else that you want to see, please let me know in the comments. Maybe it's about fresh MVVM, something that you're still missing there, or maybe it's about another framework that I need to dig in and show you the beginnings of as well. Thank you again for watching another one of my videos. Like I said a little bit earlier on, maybe click that join button, see if you want to join that membership and support me a little bit for all that I've been doing here. Um, but of course, you you can just also press that like button, which is very much free. And I'm still happy with that as well. Um, and check if that little subscribe button is lit up so that you're subscribed to my channel, you'll be notified automatically of new content, which is awesome. Other than that, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.